everybody, and welcome to another week of Let's Talk. I am your host, author, Dre Lett. Thank you for joining me for another fun-filled week where we inform, inspire, and motivate. We get you going during these tough times and beyond. So come on in the room and have a seat so we can Let's Talk. As you guys know, you can view my shows on Roku, on the channel, on the network MJ Own. The channel is Let's Talk with author Dre Lett. And if you're viewing this in a virtual live mode, thank you so very, very much for tuning in with me this Friday. So tonight, let's talk about holiday spending, the true meaning of Christmas, and staying healthy during the holidays. We also have some surprise guests and gift giveaways. So get ready to type in the chat for your chance to win some gifts if you're watching this live. I might add giveaways will only be given to live virtual audience members only. And so before we get into all of that, first we have a message from our sponsors. So we'll be right back. Meanwhile, Put in the chat where you're viewing the show from, your name and city and state, so I can give you a shout out. Okay, and we'll be back after these few minutes from uh, after we hear from our sponsors. As you guys saw the book from Richard Rocker in Houston, make sure you guys support him. That's a book about his 60 plus years of skating. He has a great story to tell. And also, as you saw in the previous video, you can now view Let's Talk on various different ways. We now have an app through MJ Own Network. You can view it on the Firefox stick all the ways that you saw in that video. So make sure that you tune in in any way that is convenient for you. I do appreciate your support. Okay, you guys. So, um, you know, this holiday season from Thanksgiving, they were predicting everyone was going to get sick. And even I was kind of skeptical, but like, yeah, okay. But 
people did really get sick. And so now what we have is what we call a tridemic, right? So what I want to share with you guys before we get into the gift giving and some of the surprise guests is, you know, during the holiday season, Christmas and New Year's Eve, you want to stay healthy from what they're calling the tridemic. And basically that is COVID, the flu, and the respiratory disease in the, in the case of the kids. So this show was taped previously. Dr. V has a Medical Monday, and we previously taped this show for the Medical Mondays. And if you go out on my channel, you'll see the Medical Mondays out there. But I wanted to share this with you. It's just a couple minutes long, but I think it's some really good information that you guys can watch and just, you know, get ready to gear your immune systems up and do what you need to do to prevent from getting sick during this holiday season. Okay, so we will take a look at that and we will be back shortly. We've got Dr. V. Dr. Valda Crowder, affectionately known as Dr. V, works in one of the busiest emergency rooms in the United States. She has seen it all. She's here to talk about the surge in recent COVID strands, the flu, and respiratory diseases known as the tridemic on today's Medical Mondays. So without further ado, let's bring her onto the virtual stage. Hi, Dr. V. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, and yourself? You stand safe Good. and happy, yuck, yuck, stuff in the air? <laughs> oh, yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I, have, I have not caught a cold yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know, you're the expert, so I'm going to turn everything over to you and let you share uh, all your information with us on about all the stuff that's coming our way. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. All righty. And so, yeah, you will begin to hear, everyone will begin to hear on the news about the tridemic. And I get a lot of questions about, you know, what exactly is a tridemic and why are we having it and what do we need to do? So I thought I would put together a little presentation to kind of explain what is actually happening right now. So if you go to the first slide, a tridemic is basically where we have a surge in three viral infections all at the same time. And that is what's occurring right now. So it's COVID-19, RSV, and influenza. Um, and really, they kind of look very similar. You can't tell which one you necessarily have. They all have a congested runny nose. You get a cough, a fever, sore throat, headache. So they have some, uh, a, a lot of commonalities. If you go to the next slide, I'll go over what some of the differences are. So RSV tends to be um, more severe, particularly in children. Um, it is associated with um, a lot of wheezing. Um, and I'll show a video a little bit later on that kind of shows a little bit about how, what it looks like when a child is in distress breathing. Um, influenza, um, which is commonly known as the flu, there's influenza A and influenza B. It's most distinctive because it has a very high fever associated with it. Um, and then COVID-19, as we know, um, people can get a lot of fatigue, brain fog, and kind of lose their sense of taste or smell. Now, what's important is you can have, you can be infected with one or more. So we are seeing people who are coming in and they have RSV and influenza, or they have influenza and COVID, or they have RSV and COVID. So this is, this is what's making the tridemic particularly bad. All right, let's go on to the next slide. So hospitals are basically becoming overwhelmed. Um, recently, I was working last week. I had a child that I needed to get admitted. Um, we could not find a hospital within 300 miles. Mm -hmm. um, and 300 miles includes Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, major cities. Um, so um, currently we have more than three quarters of the pediatric hospital beds are full. In some cases, um, over 90% of the pediatric hospital beds are full. Um, and our seniors are more likely also to get hospitalized and, and are getting hospitalized at a higher rate. Um, we have now had flu hospitalizations at the highest level that we've ever seen in almost a decade. Um, so there have been at least 2.8 million illnesses and 23,000 hospitalizations and 1,300 deaths are anticipated from this tridemic. Um, so go on to the next page and I'll go on a little bit more about uh, what's happening. So recently on November 15th, and I'm not sure why we're not seeing this on the news every single day, but the American Association of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association requested that the federal government step in and declare a state of emergency. 
That is how bad it is right now. And it is only expected to get worse as we go into December, January, and February. So both of these professional organizations have already requested help from the federal government. And emergency declaration has not been declared, but it needs to be declared. So I wanna just make sure that that's clear. All right, next, next slide. So if you look at these, RSV usually affects, is called, they, they call it RSV, but the actual name is respiratory syncytial virus. And basically it impacts younger children. Um, it impacts, adults can also get RSV, but they don't normally get as sick because our airways are larger. Children, their airways are smaller, so their airways are more likely to get clogged. So that's how you get the wheezing and all of the noises when they actually um, are breathing. So in an adult, it'll be a mild cold. In a kid, it can, it can really lead to difficulties breathing and they can wind up on a ventilator. Wow. All right, let's start, next slide. All right, so if you just click that, I think we should be able to, what I want, before you click that, what I want people to notice is difficulty breathing in a child is sometimes not easy to detect because the child can otherwise look happy and smiling. But what you'll notice in this video is they're breathing fast in some cases, you'll notice their nose flaring. You'll hear the noise. Um, and also you'll see the chest sucking in and you'll see in between their ribs. So it's just a short video. Go ahead. Wow. Okay. So yeah, so I wanted people to really see that because at home, I don't want you to miss these signs, right? If you see your child breathing like this, you need to bring them to the emergency department. It is really, really important. Mm -hmm. This just shows how RSV infections have gone up in Pennsylvania. We're seeing this type of graph in every state that we live in. Um, and it could be, you know, th this is the sort of thing that's caught at daycare or there may be an older brother or sister that brings it home and then the whole family gets sick. But if you see breathing like what you saw in the videotape, it's really important to get your child into either their pediatrician's office and urgent care or the emergency department, depending upon how sick you feel they are. All right, next slide. Right. So influenza, influenza A and B are routinely spread with a seasonal flu epidemic. A is the only, um, a, uh, influenza A viruses are the only viruses known to cause a flu pandemic or the pandemics that we've seen in the past. I want to just, on the next slide, I'll show you a little bit between, about the differences. Or oh, actually, this is actually the global death rates. I think this is really important because this is what we're going to see with COVID, right? So when you had the Spanish flu in the early 1900s, you had millions of deaths um, in the in the range of uh, 20 million deaths. And then over the years, um, as the different flu uh, epidemics have occurred, you've seen that the death rate has slowly decreased, but we still have about 400,000 deaths a year worldwide from the flu. All right, next, next slide. If you look at influenza A and influenza B, um, they're very similar in a lot of um, in, a, in a lot of uh, examples. They're both actually spread by droplets. Um, in uh, for influenza B, in influenza B, animals are not a carrier, but in influenza A, they are. Um, and you'll find that the symptoms are very similar. So you can't really tell a difference by the symptom. The reason, the way you actually tell the difference is when you actually get a flu test. And if it comes back positive, they will say you have influenza A or influenza B. And the treatment is basically the same sort of um, uh, prescription for Tamiflu. Tamiflu has to be taken in the first 48 to 72 hours of your symptoms. So it's really important to get diagnosed early. Um, and then everything else is sort of rest, relaxation, hydration, Tylenol, Motrin, et cetera. All right, next slide. 
So this actually just looks at how many people get sick a year with the flu. And it looks at the various categories as far as symptomatic illness, medical visits, hospitalizations, and deaths. And as you see, you know, almost a million people or so in each of these age categories get sick with the flu. But what happens is the younger people usually survive. We've had no deaths so far in the zero to 17 year old age, but the older people do die of the flu. So RSV, the young people actually get in trouble and die. In the influenza, the older people get in trouble and die. Wow. All right, next slide. This actually just shows, um, this is from May until November 5th. And this shows the number, the trend in the um, positive flu test um, that we've had nationwide. And as you see, it's peaking at the same time that RSV is peaking. Wow. And the next slide just actually shows what's happening by state. Um, and the darker colors are states that actually have a higher activity level. What by the time we actually get into January, February, the entire country is going to be the dark purple or dark brown colored. Because of the right. seasons, yeah. Next wow. slide. So what's happening with COVID? Everybody's like, well, what's happening with COVID? This kind of shows what's, what's happening uh, related to COVID. We sort of had the peak in December, 2021. And as you see now, it's, it's sort of coming down and it's Okay, I think we uh, lost her. She's frozen. Hopefully she'll come back here in a minute so we can see, so she can finish her um, presentation. So she'll be back just a few minutes um, here. But, you know, just as she was talking, it's amazing how those numbers, you know, for the babies, um, you know, how they're dying from the flu and then the adults are dying from COVID. So, um, oh my goodness, you just got to be safe. Um, you know, and I know a lot of people don't really want the um, mask, but that seems to be the only way that we can go. There she is. Okay. <laughs> we got you, Dr. V. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. All right. it's all good. <laughs> so yeah, so this just shows what's happening recently with COVID. Um, COVID spiked uh, last winter. Um, and what we're seeing now with COVID, again, is primarily folks that are um, not vaccinated. Okay. Um, I want to remind people the importance of getting your kids vaccinated, because when we talk about folks that are unvaccinated, people always think about adults. We have a lot of children that are unvaccinated. Um, and when you look at uh, children in the, um, in, the, in the school age range or preschool range, two to four, only 9% have had one dose, only 4% have completed an entire dose, five to 11 only. 39% have had a dose um, and only 32% have completed a dose and 12 to 17 year olds. Um, similarly, only about two thirds have actually completed one or both doses. So it's really important if you have children that are going to school to actually complete the vaccination series um, that, it, that is uh, recommended for COVID-19. So what should you do? I think this is really important. Um, obviously, avoid, avoid close contact, large crowded areas. Um, uh, and, and I remind people that a school is a large crowded area. So if you are going to send your kids to school, they're in high school, middle school, when they start changing classes all at the same time, that is a large crowded area. Um, I really recommend that people wear a face mask indoors and that you send your kids to school with a face mask. I know some of them will say um, their friends aren't wearing one, but it's really important to protect your family, particularly if you have younger uh, siblings, newborns, or elderly grandparents living at home. Uh, frequent hand washing, disinfecting surfaces, um, and really important is to avoid sm smoking and vaping. People who smoke and vape do not do as well when they get um, these illnesses. Um, both the flu and COVID have vaccines for them. RSV has a vaccine that's actually in development that is showing a lot of great promise. Uh, so hopefully by next year, we will have a vaccine for that as well. But you can at least protect yourself uh, from two of the three. 
Um, and I tell people, um, make sure to do that and follow your physician's recommendations as far as getting vaccinated and when to get vaccinated. But it's very, very important. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, we expect to see more this winter. This is only going to get worse. I know in Northern Virginia, we had a high school that actually completely had to shut down because half of the children were sick. 50% wow. of the children were sick. They had to cancel the football games. Um, they had to shut down the entire school. So please be vigilant and don't let your guard down this winter. We're congregating for Thanksgiving. We're congregating. We just congregated for Thanksgiving 2022. We'll be congregating again for Christmas 2022. So I just remind people, um, you know, don't bring sick relatives to the dinner dinner parties uh, or sick kids to um, Christmas. Um, stay at home if you're not feeling well. Um, and other than that, follow all the precautions around hand washing and disinfecting and wearing a mask indoors. Absolutely. Wow. There we have it. So um, Dr. V, tell um, the viewers how they can get a hold of you if they have any questions. Absolutely. So all my information is there. My website is askdrv.us. Um, and my uh, uh, Twitter and Instagram handles are all there as well. Um, so please make sure to reach out if there's any questions that you have or any information that you need. Absolutely. Um, and, and I certainly do appreciate you so much for sharing that information because this year is going to be, like you said, it's different. You got the flu and the respiratory diseases. And the question that I have for you is that the face mask, is that going to, I know you mentioned it in your presentation, but will that protect you from the flu, provided you don't touch your face with your hands, that kind of thing? Yeah, so the face mask is very helpful um, in protecting. And you don't need to wear an N95 face mask. You could just wear a regular face mask. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes that's a little bit easier to breathe in. So I mm -hmm. tell people it's okay just to wear a regular face mask. And, um, you know, if you're gathering with people indoors, I say, you know, wear a face mask to eat. Obviously, you want to take it down and eat during your meal and enjoy your meal. Um, the other thing that's important during the holidays, if you're meeting with family, open up a window. Yeah. Improve the ventilation. Have yeah. some fresh air coming in if you have a lot of people coming in. That also decreases the likelihood of actually transmitting any of these viruses. Definitely. Well, that is definitely some good information. And thank you so much. And you guys, if you have any questions, make sure you put it on the Facebook page. Well, let's talk with author Drillette or and or Dr. V's information that she put out there. We're going to continue to have medical Mondays, right, Dr. Thank V? You. You're going to cover hot topics and things that are hot medical topics. So we really appreciate you for coming on because this is good stuff. Definitely. Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We will be in touch, Dr. V. Okay, you guys, and there you have it. That was the Medical Monday where we had Dr. V talking about the tridamic. So hopefully you'll find that information he helpful and help you prepare to stay healthy for this awesome holiday season we got coming up. Okay, and if you have any questions, um, make sure you put them in the chat or you can send them directly to me by way of Messenger. Go on the Facebook page, Let's Talk with Author Drillette and send in your questions to Messenger and I'll get those questions to Dr. V and she'll get you some answers, okay? All right, so moving right along. Oh my gosh, so this is a surprise guest. Um, this guest that we've got coming up um, is actually my daughter, Irie. Woo -woo. Irie is going to be here to tell us the meaning of Christmas from a millennial's perspective. You know, we always think about the older adults and how we look at Christmas, but what, how do millennials think about it? You know, especially during a time of, you know, we're still in a pandemic and it's not, it's not quite the same. We're trying to make it as close as we can get it, but just curious to see how they look at things because they are the next generation coming up, right? So she's going to give us the millennials perspective on Christmas and she's got some giveaways as well to uh, the live virtual audience members. And then I'm also, I thought about, it, I'm also going to open it up to those who are watching it in the recording phase. So um, without further ado, you guys uh, help me welcome to the virtual stage, my baby girl, my daughter, Irie Mitchell. Hey, Irie. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Are you ready for Christmas? I am. I am. I'm so excited and I'm ready to have that week off from work. So <laughs> I'm 
the thing. Out, in the, out in the workplace working uh, now, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, wow. it's different from how in college, you know, Christmas break was come home and eat food and, you know, get your laundry done. And now it's like, oh, I'm just happy to not work. <laughs> so, yeah. I understand. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, what does Christmas mean to you as a millennial? What does that mean? Um, well, Christmas is a, to me, you know, it's definitely a time where you get together, family and friends, and you just kind of just enjoy each other's company and, um, you know, share gifts through love and gratitude. But I kind of view it as like a festive holiday. Like there's just like a party holiday. There's just so much you can do. You know, you have holiday parties, then you have the, um, you know, the houses, you go through the neighborhoods, everyone has the big Christmas lights up and, you know, there's good food and then you have the ugly sweaters and then everything on TV is like, Christmas movies back to back. So it's kind of like Christmas is like a party. Like it's Christmas. <laughs> like there's so much you can do. So, um, you know, besides the fact of it meaning, you know, with love and, and family and, you know, gifts and stuff like that. I just think like the whole week leading up to Christmas and even after just that whole two weeks going into the new year is a fun time. So me and my friends, we get excited, you know, it's, like I said, Christmas parties and, and things like that. And, you know, of course, being off from work. So I don't know. <laughs> well, let me ask you, now that you've grown and got your own place. So, you know, growing up at home, you know, mom would decorate and all that. Do you as a millennial, do you go all out and decorate the Christmas tree, put lights up and do all that stuff? Uh, a little bit. I know some of my friends, um, you know, get into it. But since this is my first time, I don't know if you guys can see, but I have a little tree yeah. right here and I put an ornament. On. <laughs> so that's my way of doing something. Yeah, but I, I do miss it, you know, like when I was a kid and I was seeing yeah. you put up the lights and stuff. And so it's like, oh, but now I'm just kind of like, where's the Christmas parties at? You know, I want to have fun. Santa. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. That is so funny. So, you know, um, again, for the millennials, you know, you guys, do you guys go around? I know when I was your age, we would um go and hit one relative's house and go to the next one, just make our rounds. So as a millennial, do you guys still do, still do that? Do y'all still go out and just make your rounds um, in one night or what's it, what's that like? Yeah. Um, I would say, uh, you know, definitely when it's the holidays, everyone understands like, oh, you're with family. But then it's like, OK, so like after you leave your mom's house, what are you doing tonight? You know, so it's kind of like you do still make your rounds with visiting family. But I think because now that we're older and we live on our own, it's kind of like I still want to do something. I still want to go out. I still want to, you know, see my friends and stuff. So and, and of course, in Atlanta, um, I live in Atlanta. There's always things going on like now that the holidays are in clubs and bars are fully packed because people, you know, want yeah. to go out. So, yeah. yeah. So oh, I, I would yeah. say, yeah, we do. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's so cool to hear how you guys view it. So it sounds like the millennials still have a little bit of what we, uh, I guess we're Gen X is what we instilled into you guys. You guys still have a little bit of that yet you still want to party and get your group I understand. Oh, yeah, just because we're 90s babies we got it from y'all so. <laughs> right. so we get it somewhere <laughs> I understand so I understand that you have something that you want to give away uh to a viewer I will I will uh put up the information here and I'll let you do your thing on on how you how you want to do it yeah so um so tonight, a lucky audience member will have the chance to win this book right here. Um, of course, written by my mother, Dree Lett. Um, but it's uh, the title's Just Another Day and then some. So I'll give you a uh, read the bio on it. But um, this book is about sickness, adversity, and near-death experiences. The story revolves around a young woman who suffers from a chronic illness that almost takes her life, causing her causing havoc in her marriage, finances, and faith. It's not until she reaches rock bottom in her life that she starts to see the light and make significant changes around her. This story will encourage anyone who has ever questioned the hand that they were dealt in life. So um, I know that we are close to the end of this year. And, um, you know, around this time is really a good time to reflect on 
all the hardships and challenges that you overcame or are still facing. And it's kind of like, you know, like, man, I don't want to bring this into the new year, but you know, what can I do? So um, if there's really anyone that's out there that, that feels like, you know, that they can relate to, to this book and, and, and is trying to get some type of motivation to end the year strong, we're, we're just curious to see how this woman, you know, how she overcomes her challenges like as, as, as anyone, um, you know, feel free to uh, put your stuff in the comment section and, and we can choose you. Of course, this book would be an autographed copy. So um, I, I feel like this book is, is a really good book. Of course, if you can't tell on the cover, that is me. <laughs> so, <She's a> model. <laughs> so that is me. But um, th this book is definitely, uh, you know, just showing that it's not it's not the end of the world. Like, I you know, know, we come through a lot of things. And, you know, it's been a tough few years since the pandemic. So I know we can all relate to that. But, you know, in some mm -hmm. way, it feels good to know that you're not the only one hurting and that you can uh, not, you know, it, you know, listen to someone else's story and say like, wow, they did it so I can do it too. So Absolutely. I think this is, this is a very good book to, you know, to, like I said, reflect on your year and, you know, try to get some motivation to be strong heading into the new year. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Um, and you guys, um, you know, um, when I wrote the book, I was at the time I was like, do I pay a model thousands and thousands of dollars or do I get my college kid? <laughs> she was in college at the time and she did a selfie in her car. And I said, oh, that picture is perfect. And so I used her picture on the on the um on the cover of the book. It is a fictional book. It's not about her or about me, but it is definitely, she said, like a story that is going to lift your spirits. It's going to show you things that she's gone through, but it's going to lift your spirits in that it'll give you faith to, to press on, perseverance. So as Irie said, if, any, if there's anybody that's watching live that's gone through a rough time in your life and you're not ashamed to say, hey, I had a hard time this year, raise your hand. We will get you an autographed copy. And if you're too shy, um, send us a message and messenger and we will make sure to get you a autographed copy of the book. Um, that is Irie's giveaway. Um, let's see, is there anybody saying anything? I see some people saying, hey, and um, I don't know. They might be too shy, Irie. They might be too afraid to say anything. So I'll tell you what we'll do. You guys send me a message uh, on the Let's Talk with Author Drillette Facebook page. And just if you want to discreetly tell me you've had a hard year, we'll make sure we get that to you. So um, I appreciate you, Ari, so much for coming on and <laughs> what Christmas means to you. Um, here's a comment. Let's see. Um, I don't know if she's... Um, she says, uh, Diane says, after all the shopping is done, gifts, wrap, house, decorated, meals, planned, my relaxation is watching Christmas movies and having my adult beverages, holiday eggnog uh, or celebrate. Yes, 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 indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, you've got to make Christmas um, what it is for you. You know, um, you got to relax and just reflect on just family and just relaxing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like we got a winner. Carla says she would love to read this book. Oh, and, <laughs> and, you, know, you know, Carla was on our show before. Carla cares for her mother who's ill. And um, Carla does so much for her mom. And so, yes, Carla, I think this will be awesome for you to get because you are definitely a caregiver and she's always in the trenches. So we love you, Carla. And she's a loyal viewer. So how befitting to make sure she gets it. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see here. Uh, one executive producer says, thanks, Ari, for sharing your meaning of what Christmas is. <laughs> 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 yes yeah, so thank you baby girl for coming on let's talk i love you for coming on and uh, doing this segment and hopefully you'll uh, come back on and do some more stuff <laughs> oh yeah this was so much fun thank you for having me um, and, and tell everybody what's your favorite dish you want your mom to prepare for christmas dinner oh you already know my mom's mac and cheese and her <laughs> sweet potato yams her ham <laughs> Let's see what else. I want the collard greens. I want the cornbread. <laughs> I will be over there Christmas yep. Eve morning. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Love you. Have a good night. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, I love her to pieces. She is a great, oh, she's awesome. She's awesome. She um she stepped in and said she wanted to share what her um 
meaning of Christmas was. So you guys, again, uh, Carla's so proud that you won the book. Woo -woo. So we'll make sure we get it autographed and over to you, Carla. Yes, indeed. So my next surprise guest, woo -woo -woo. okay, you guys, is um, you, he's no stranger to the show. His name is Rockin' Richard Houston. Yes, indeed. As you guys see from his ads, he is a legendary roller skater who is a loyal viewer of the show. Oh my gosh, this guy is, is loyal as well. Richard has some epic projects in the works, so be on the lookout for that. I'm so excited to see that coming down the pipeline. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Super excited for him. So without further ado, here's Rockin' Richard Houston to give us some tips on buying Christmas gifts on a budget. And he's got some giveaways too. So let's welcome to the virtual stage. Hey, hello. How are you? <laughs> how, are you? Hey, how, are you? <laughs> how are you guys doing? Oh my gosh, awesome. How are you up there in the D? Is it cold? Girl. What's the weather like? Girl, it's skating weather. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long as the roads and ice and all that stuff stay out of the way we all right girl we roll right on through that stuff i know that's <laughs> right <laughs> we've been doing this a long time <laughs> how's I everybody know. doing everybody <laughs> is good that um several people are saying hey you know carl hey, she say, hey rock and oh, oh, I, I am so glad to be on the show girl girl we you you on your way now <laughs> oh my goodness i hope keep going. Going. just keep it going yes, hey, yes. this is our holiday Absolutely. This, this is not time. Yes, sir. It is. And you got some great things coming up. I'm super excited for you. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Mm -mm -mm. It is our time now. We're ready to have some fun now. You know, it's it's gotten to that point now where, like I was saying before, technology and talent has finally come together and they got married. So we can go for the honeymoon now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. So, oh, oh it's just. It's great to be, you know, here for the holiday and, you know, we're all, we made it through a lot. We've been through a lot, you know, so now it's time for us to sit back and relax and just try and make something out of this. You know, we, we're not there yet, but we're working on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're better off than we were last year. Okay. So we can celebrate a little bit this year and I've got some great ideas on yes. some gifts for this year. Okay. Absolutely. For Christmas. Well, let's you share them with everybody. I'll let you do your I, thing, I, sir. There's so many of us that are, you know, what, you know, we're broke and we don't have enough money to do this and do that. So I've got some great ideas on some things that people can do to really help out and be on a nice budget at the same time. Okay. Get $20 together. Go buy some lottery tickets. Okay. Take those lottery tickets. Give them to your barber, your uh, the person at the grocery store. Give him a ticket. Blow his mind. <laughs> 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 you know, things like that. You know, also help the elderly out. You know, you can fool around and buy about $50 worth of groceries. Take them to uh, some elderly person that you know that just can't get out, you know, can't get to the store. Instead of taking them, find out what they want. Go bad for them and surprise them and ring the doorbell and tell them, hey, Merry Christmas. All right. Mm -hmm. There's gift certificates. You know, you can do those. All right. Say for your girlfriend, your wife or whatever, give them a gift certificate so that way they can go and get the nails done, get your feet done, you know, and uh, especially those feet. You know, we, we we like the feet, but we don't want to be all crusty and everything. So uh <laughs> Get you a good certificate and get those bad boys done so we can have some fun with them, all right? <laughs> you can also get a self-improvement, okay? There's a self-improvement uh, app that you can get that'll help you out to calm you down because we've been through so much and we really need something that's going to relax us and get us back to where we, you know, can get back to having a good time, you know, because I think next year we're going to really break out and it's going to really be some nice things going on for it, you know. Also, there's a really nice one here. Get an umbrella. A lot of rain. You know, umbrella, less than $20. You can buy an umbrella, surprise them. Now you can get all the, I mean, umbrellas, monogram. And you can, when they open it up, have some nice words on it. I love you. Something like that. Something that'll just make them feel like it's special and it's just for them, you know. This, wow, this Christmas here, it can be really special for a lot of us. And I'm just so happy to finally be here. <laughs> we're, we're finally making it, you know, so let's just keep it going, you know, and the skating world is just 
getting much, much better now. We're having a great time and I won't say anything. I'm just going to wait until surprises come out for everyone to uh, realize that uh, this is our year. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I, I I love those gift ideas. Like you said, a lot of people are having a tough time right now. And oh, yeah. those gift ideas range from anywhere from 20 bucks to 60 bucks. And I think very simple, awesome. very simple. Mm, mm, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, the, the, there's several comments in here. People saying thank you for the um, suggestions. Definitely. So, so Richard, I know that you and you're such an awesome, awesome person. I know you want to give back. So, what is mm. it that um, I know you, you sent this over to me? So I'm just gonna put it up. I'm gonna let you. Ah, <laughs> who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, my God, it, it was such an amazing trip journey, you know, writing this book. And now that I'm into part two and I've got this thing called the QR code, that's the magic button. OK, that's the button that's going to let me be able to not only write this story, but also put it in video so that you'll be able to see their moves and everything. I can talk all day long about how great a skater is in this first book. But until you actually see that person and the visualization comes through and you see how great they are, then it all comes together. So be on the lookout for Motown on Sound on Wheels Part 2. But if you haven't read the first one yet, I advise you to get it. And for our lucky winner tonight, someone is going to get an autographed copy sent directly to their home from me. How about that? Absolutely. And I think in order to get this book, you know, Richard said, the first person who can put in the chat who Hello. has got any of those gifts, right? And I'll That's show right. you. I'll show, I'll share it with you guys again. Any of the gifts that we uh, that he said that you can get that are fairly inexpensive, if you've bought them or if you're considering buying any of these, and also the streaming network ones, those are good too. Oh, yeah. um, put in the chat that you have intentions on doing it or you've done mm -hmm. it already for your Christmas gift. And this He's book will be on its way. Yes. <laughs> He is going to give you your autograph, an autograph copy of his book. So um, let's see if anybody puts in the chat if they've um, <laughs> bought it. And if not, you guys can messenger me and um, I will get that information to Richard and he will definitely um, send that your way. Looks like we got some shy people tonight, Richard. So what That's I'm going right. to do is they'll see the show on Roku. Oh, so yeah. um, those people, you know, if you... Um, are going to buy any of those gifts or thought of it, just send me a message on Messenger on the Facebook page. Let's talk with author Drillette. I'll get that over to Richard. He will autograph that book and shoot it your way. So no that is so awesome how you give back, sir. That is amazing. I think that, you know, that's what Christmas is all about, giving back where you can and helping others. To. No. That's a must. We must do that. You know, in order to feel good about yourself, you have to do something in order to feel that way, you know, and mm -hmm. what better way to feel good than to help another person? Absolutely. Uh oh, we just got a winner. <laughs> I said I just subscribed to Ruku after watch more. Let's talk. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. She's my daughter, so I don't know, Irie. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, Irie, we'll get you a book, but we'll still leave it up before our winner. <laughs> she fans. Absolutely. <laughs> These millennials, they know they know what they're doing, girl. They be I love on it, it, don't they? Oh, don't they be my on it? God. Absolutely. They be on it. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you so much, Richard. Don't be a stranger. Come back to Let's Talk. And oh, no doubt. I cannot wait for all the great things that are coming your way. Everything is coming up roses. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep rolling, sir. I see you got that Rollicade shirt on. Real, real quick, tell everybody where Rollicade is at. Well, the Rollicade is in Southwest Detroit, Schaefer and Ford Street. It's actually the home of Byron Allen's family. This is his oh. family's roller skating rink. Oh, yes. And that's all I'm going to say. But uh, <laughs> some great things are going to come out of that building. That's just be on the lookout for some really hint, nice hint. things. Oh, oh, yeah, in Detroit, God. Michigan, come on down and roll with us. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Richard, for coming on Let's Talk. And don't be a stranger. And I appreciate you so much. And uh, everybody, give me, get, excuse me, the winner that sends me a message, I'll get it to Richard. He'll sign the book and shoot it your way, mail it to you, okay? Thank you no, once God. again, sir. Merry Christmas. Happy and holidays. Merry Christmas to you and everyone else. And tell my boy Mark, I'm going to get him in that man cave eventually. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely.
<laughs> Talk with you soon. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Happy Christmas and Happy New Year. Bye bye. Happy now. New Year. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> That was so awesome for him to give away a gift. That is so wonderful. So we're not done with the gift giveaways. We got one last thing. As you guys know, Let's Talk um, is a show that is produced, written and directed by me, but um, I do have executive producer. And so a lot goes into Let's Talk. I know some people think that, you know, just go live and record a show. Oh my goodness, it's so, so much that goes into it. So my executive producer told me, he says, you know, I want to give away something as well. Isn't that cool? That is so awesome. So the executive producer wants to give to a loyal viewer. Um, you know, if you want to put your answer in the chat, if you're watching this live, that's great. The question that the executive producer wants to ask is how many years has Let's Talk existed? If you want, put it in the chat and the $25 gift card will be coming your way. If you're too shy to say it, um, make sure you shoot me a message on Messenger and we will get it to you. So I'll wait a couple minutes while you guys, um, how many years has Let's Talk existed? Um, for those of you that have been watching with me, um, you can give a rough estimate. Let's just see, is, any, is anybody going to put anything in the chat? Um, oh, <laughs> of course, of course. Carla said two years. Yes, girl, two years. She cleaning up tonight. Yes, Carla, that is absolutely correct. Um, as those of you that know, I started the show on my kitchen counter two years ago when the pandemic kicked off um, more than a little bit over two years ago. And so, Carla, you are correct, ma'am. You're getting a $25 gift card from the executive producer. And I'm so happy that you won because, as I said earlier, She's a caregiver to her mother and she does so much for her mom. And so awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so glad you won, Carla. We will get that over to you. Woohoo! <laughs> you know, like I said, so much going to these shows, and we appreciate those that, that tune in with us and watch it, like Carla and Richard and my daughter and all of you that watch on Roku, it means so much to us because the whole purpose behind this is to inform, inspire, and motivate. Nothing more, just to do that, just to live spirits in these tough times that we're living in now. So to close out this show, I want to share with you guys my true meaning of what Christmas is. So, you know, I refer back to the Bible in the book of John chapter three, verse 16. It says, quote, for God so loved the world that he gave his only his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So for me, for Christians, the Christmas holiday honors God's manifestations on earth in the form of Jesus. So you guys, as you're opening your gifts, you're going to your parties, you're celebrating, make sure first and foremost that you honor Jesus and God during your celebrating. Make sure you do that first. If you can go to church, if you can't go to church, say a prayer, what have you, but make sure you honor God because that is the reason for the season. All right. So you guys, as I tell you, every time we talk, do one good thing for one person each day and you can affect 365 lives. Make sure you stay healthy, take your supplements, wear your mask if you need to, if you don't get the booster, what have you, but just stay healthy, have a good time and be safe. And if no one's told you they love you, know that I love you. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And with those words, I'm out. <laughs>